Now let's talk about the next drawback of hydrogen, which is its price. The best solution in the world, if it's too expensive, will not be used. So here's a graph I've talked about earlier, a plot of a table, uh, talking about the price per gigajoule of different forms of energy. Electricity at about $44 per gigajoule in Australia, natural gas and petrol 15 to 20. Coal is cheap, which is why people use so much coal despite its heavy pollution. But hydrogen at the moment is more expensive than anything else. There are actually only three places in Australia where you can fill up a hydrogen powered car with hydrogen one in, one in Canberra, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, and they'll cost you about 125 Australian dollars per gigajoule. So very expensive. And that's a drawback. I mean, people might still use it if they're forced to. You might have to have some tax to make sure that people don't use the more polluting alternatives. But they won't want to, so you start getting all the political problems. It would be much easier if it was cheaper. Now, hydrogen is currently made in three different ways, and they have different prices. From the environment, environmental point of view, the worst is so-called grey hydrogen. This is produced from natural gas, from methane, so fossil fuels. Um, it's split up with a steam process, which releases carbon dioxide, so it's bad for the environment and global warming. But that's how most of the world's hydrogen is currently produced, and it's cheap, about US dollars, one US dollar per kilogram. Blue hydrogen is the same process, but the CO2 that's released is somehow captured and buried underground or something like this. This is more expensive because the cost of capturing the carbon dioxide and storing it is quite large. So that's about two to five US dollars per kilogram. And then there's what we've been talking about so far, green hydrogen, which is produced using renewable energies to electrolyze water. It's pollution free, it's, and that's more like three to eight dollars per kilogram. So at the moment, it's the most expensive way to produce hydrogen. But I said at the moment, the hope of hydrogen fans is that the price of hydrogen is going to come down. Now, for most things, the more you build, the cheaper they get. We've seen that the price of solar electricity has been going down dramatically. The price of wind power has been going down less dramatically, but still quite a lot. Batteries have been getting much cheaper. Then there are other things like the cost of universities or the cost of nuclear power that have actually been flat or going up. Which one applies to electrolyzers to produce hydrogen? So remember, an electrolyzer takes uh, hopefully renewable energy and uses that to split water up to make hydrogen. Now it's going to get cheaper right away because the renewable energy is getting much cheaper. But how about the electrolyzers? Well, it turns out there seems to be the similar sort of learning curve for them. Here's a graph of the cost in US dollars per kilowatt of electrolyzers. And you can see that between about 2005 and about 2020, it's gone down by about a factor of four. And so if you extrapolate, it could be getting quite cheap. This is what's called an experience curve, which is how many have been built versus the price. Because the reason the price is going down is probably simply because more and more are being built, so people are getting better and better at it, they get more economies of scale, they have, because they're selling more, they can afford to spend more money on research and development. And again, it looks rather similar to the uh, power law that we've seen for things like uh, wind and solar and batteries. And in fact, these sort of chemical processes, and there's no real fundamental limit here, it's a chemical process, and these sort of chemical processes like batteries or how to build solar cells are the things, or, or silicon chips for that matter, Moore's law, are the sorts of situations where you really can get very big cost decreases. So governments and agencies normally tend to forget about this. If you look at the history of predictions for solar power, they've always predicted far too little because they've always assumed that whatever price we have now will remain. But the price of solar power has kept on year after year going down and down and down. Likewise, computers, they've got better and better and better for year after year after year, decade after decade. So as far as anyone can tell, there's no obvious reason why the same thing shouldn't apply to electrolyzers that produce the green hydrogen, and they could get very, very much cheaper. 
and indeed already they've got somewhat cheaper and if you look at the demand um, how many of these are being sold it is climbing very rapidly so this big drop in price we've got already is already leading to a massive increase in demand which of course means there's more market for them so there'll be more manufacturers more research and development and so it's entirely possible perhaps even likely that the price will come down so people have tried to do this. It's no use using the current price. You have to look in the future because the current prices are not going to fix where they are. Um, so can we make this cheap? Now people have looked into it and you want to use for a start the cheapest possible renewable energy. So some like offshore wind turbines, they produce energy and if you've got no alternative that's great but it's nothing like as cheap as onshore wind and cheapest of all is solar photovoltaic in nice sunny places around the world. So yes, you probably want to use solar energy as much as you can to power these things. The trouble is the electrolyzers themselves are quite expensive. There's a lot of capital cost to build them. So once you've spent millions of dollars building a, a farm of electrolyzers, uh, you want to run them 24 hours a day. It's not cost effective to have to switch them off uh, 15 hours a day while the, the sun sets. So what you want is renewable energy that's very cheap and available 24 hours a day. So there are various ways you could do this. In Australia, it'll probably be a combination of solar, wind and batteries, or maybe pumped hydro storage. Solar thermal is another possibility, concentrated solar, which can give you 24 hour a day heat, though it's currently more expensive. Or it could be that you do this in countries with lots of geothermal energy, like Iceland or New Zealand, which gives you 24 hours a day cheap energy in these few countries where you've got volcanoes and hot rocks just underneath the surface. But ANU researchers have looked into the costs in Australia and they think that three dollars per kilogram is or three Australian dollars per kilogram, so about two US dollars per kilogram is probably achievable now or in the very near future. And there's a stretch goal of two dollars per kilogram in the near future, at which point it's competitive with grey hydrogen, the hydrogen produced by uh, the polluting fossil fuel process without st storage. But that's just producing the hydrogen at the end of your electrolyzer plant. Of course, your electrolyzer part might be in outback Australia, and if you then have to liquefy the hydrogen or turn it into methane and then ship it halfway across the world, the costs are going to be much higher. This is the cost just where it comes out of the electrolyzer.